So for part three, we'll explore how large of a sample do we need? This is such an important question because here's the issue. It would be a shame if you did a whole bunch of work, like gathering a data set of maybe like 100 people and, every, and you put a lot of effort into the design and a lot of effort into the calculations. And then in the end, you wound up with a confidence interval that wasn't useful for you. Like maybe um, in the end, we might en estimate the confidence interval to be something for maybe, I don't know, like salaries to be somewhere between like 40,000 to 50,000, which is like maybe way too big. So how can we avoid this? We need to have a firm idea before we begin what we want. We need to know that we want to generate a confidence interval. We need to know how large we want that confidence interval to be. And we need to know what percent confident we're going to be. And really, before you even gather your data, you probably have a good idea of what your goals are. So if you have a firm idea of what your goals are, you can figure out how large of a sample you need. Now, why is this important? Well, if you generate too small of a sample, your interval is going to be too wide and not useful to you. But if you survey too many people, like let's say you took a sample size of 10,000 people, but you only needed 1,000 people to get the results you wanted, you just wasted a lot of time, resources, and money generate, you know, having the sample that you didn't need. So this is an important question before you even start your study. So suppose, for example, like before we even gather our data, we want to create a 90% confidence interval for the average GPA of all HCC students, and we want the margin of error to be no more than 0.2 uh, grade points. So how large of a sample do we need? Um, in order to do this, we will need to have an estimate of the population standard deviation, and let's say I estimate it to be approximately 0.7. All right, um, let's actually answer this question, but let's do it in a very generic manner first so we can get the formula. So we know that the margin of error um, when, we use, when we try to generate a confidence interval for mu, if we have a large sample, is going to be z times sigma over square root of n. So if we know a margin of error and we know some estimate for sigma and we know our confidence level, we could actually figure out what sample size we need. So let's just, uh, let me show you, walk you through the algebra real quick. Um, you will not have to do this algebra on the test. I will give you the final formula. So we have this formula. Um, we can start off by multiplying both sides by the square root of n to get rid of that square root of n on the bottom. And we get e square root of n equals z times sigma. Now divide both sides by e to get the n by itself. And now square both sides. So this is our formula, and we're going to use this formula to actually answer the question. All right, um, so using this formula, um, our z alpha over 2 value, if our confidence level was 90%, is 1.645. Again, you can get this from the table, or I will give you that um, small table showing you those common uh, z values. 1.645, 1.96, and 2.575. So um, depending on the confidence level. But for 95%, it's 1.645. Multiply that by 0.7, uh, our standard deviation, divided by 0.2, our margin of error. When you're done with that, square the result, square everything, and we get approximately 33.15. All right, well, so the minimum sample size we need is 33.15 people. Now, I know that when you round, you're used to rounding, you know, whichever way is closer. But since we need a minimum 33.15 people, we need to round this up because 33 is not at least 33.15. So, in other words, round this number up always. And you're going to get that we need a sample size of at least 34 people to generate the interval that I'd want to generate. Okay, so let's do the same thing for proportions. Um, suppose we want to, like, estimate it, for example, the true proportion within 1% or something like that. All right, um, let's walk through the uh, uh, derivation again. Um, looking at this formula, we have E is equal to Z times the square root of PQ over N. Um, with square roots, you can always separate them, so it's like the sep uh, square root of PQ over the square root of N. So multiplying both sides by the square root of n, we get um, e square root n equals z times square root of pq. Divide by um, e to get n by itself, we get this. And then square both sides, we get n is equal to z over e, um, square that. 
and then multiply it by PQ. We have an issue here. Um, unlike before, where maybe we could have some kind of estimate for the, our um, standard error or standard deviation or something like that, we don't have a previous estimate for PQ most likely. Um, remember, that's our actual goal here. Our goal is to estimate P. So if we're, our goal is to estimate P when we do our sample and generate a confidence interval for it, we're not going to know PQ in, in advance. In other words, we have a chicken and egg problem here. What can, you know, we need one to do the other. So what you can do instead is you can just say P and Q are both one half. Um, this will give you the most conservative estimate for the minimum sample size. So realistically, whatever number we get here, our actual number that we need is really going to be a little bit less than that. But um, just, just in case P and Q are both one half, this will give us what our minimum sample size is. So um, rewriting this formula, this is actually the formula you're going to use. Um, when P and Q are one half, that's one half times one half, which is, which is one fourth. And then we have our Z over the margin of error squared. So this is going to be our minimum sample size when dealing with proportions. Um, quick note, this is also often going to be a very, very large number. Um, like it's not unusual to need a sample size of 1,000, 10,000, even more people to get the margin of error that, uh, to get the margin of error that you want. All right, so continuing this example, if we want our estimate, uh, if we want to make our estimate within 1% of the true proportion, in other words, our margin of error is 1%. Um, well, 1% is just 0.01, so our margin of error is just 0.01. Um, since we want to do a 99% confidence interval, our Z value is 2.575. Um, so do 2.575 divided by 0.01. And remember, whenever you plug in percentages into formulas, you have to convert them to decimals first. So do that, then square it, then multiply that final result by 1 fourth, or you could just divide it by 4, either way. And I'm going to get 16,576. Yes, that large. So rounding this, we need at least, and remember, we have to round it up because um, we need at least this many people. So we need at least uh, 16,577 inter interval um, individuals to get the confidence interval that we want. Um, this is huge, of course, but that's often why a lot of these studies that are done with like estimating um, like who's going to win the presidency or what people think of the current president um, opinion polls, they often have sample sizes of like 10,000 or 20,000 people.